I recently went on a trip to New York, and while I was there, I hit up Six Flags Great Adventure. Now, to put it straight out there, I had a Six Flags day. I experienced the quote-unquote premium experience that Celine Basul is responsible for, but for today's video, we will be placing all 14 coasters from Six Flags Great Adventure in a tier list. Will any coaster in this video get the coveted elite status? Well, we'll see. Starting off with... Batman the Ride. This was one of the coasters that was closed. It was getting a new chain lift and there were workers up on top of the lift hill the entire day. Despite me not riding this specific coaster, I have ridden Batman clones before. I mean, haven't we all? It's the definition of a Six Flags experience. I don't really love Batman clones. These clones are super intense, but short. It's the leading definition of short but sweet. Every single element hits, there are a ton of positive Gs, it's extremely intense, and takes up virtually no space. It's perfect for what it does. However, I'll take a lot of the other inverts over Batman clones because of a more intimate experience. For example, I like Silver Bullet more than Batman, it's just better, it has a more unique layout. Overall, the Batman clone is nothing special to Great Adventure, and is a very solid supporting cast coaster, so it ends up in the B tier, still better than an SLC though. Dark Knight is next on the list, and this was a very interesting coaster. I have so much story to tell about my experiences with this ride, so I guess I will just pour my heart out right now. First off, there is a huge group of teenage line jumpers, which confirms Salim's assumption that it is a daycare for teenagers. And as these people jump through the line, it's a wall-themed indoor queue by the way, every single Karen turned to their direction and started screaming at them. It was so funny. And then when they got to the station, everyone was yelling at their ride-ops to kick them off. And they did. And the whole queue line erupted in cheers while the teenagers cursed the queue line out and flipped them off. They did not get kicked out of the park because I saw them trying to use one flash pass to get their whole group of 12 into a queue line. I'm not really bothered by this, I find it more amusing than anything, but yeah, I just thought I would share my experience. The actual ride itself is so-so, the definition of it is pretty straightforward. It's an indoor wild mouse. The queue line is well-themed, I mean the whole land is well-themed with the Justice League ride and the Batman the ride, feels more like a universal park than a Six Flags park, and I actually really enjoy my time spent in this land. But back to the coaster, it's a very typical layout. 180 degree turns, a few drops, the only thing it has going for it is it's in the dark. Now there are some attempts at theming, I personally don't like it. I think Six Flags found a way to black out the whole building, then the sharp turns will catch you way more off guard and be more of a thrilling and fun experience. However, the lightly themed coaster gives off light that makes it so you can see the track, which kind of defeats the purpose of having it indoor. You need to either know to go full out and enclose the track everywhere, or nothing at all, and make an effort to black out everything. That's my opinion, the turns give good laterals, the drops are so-so, and it's just a typical wild mouse. C tier. Next up is El Toro, and we all know this is not open. I mean it's the biggest news in the coaster world, only behind Top Thrill Dragster, so I obviously did not ride this, and yes, it's aggravating to walk by a world class coaster and see it not running. It hurt, but I'll be back eventually. This coaster is going to open summer 2023, which is this year, so that is good news I guess. I don't have credibility to talk or place this coaster, but like, hey, it's not my fault, it's Six Flags cheap investment decisions. Anyways, it's gets the title of the best winning coaster in the world, and while I don't think this is true, this coaster definitely places in the top 10, which puts it in the elite tier. However, the elite status is hard to earn in my rankings, and I don't have that acquired taste for wood coasters, so it could be a miss for me if I actually wrote it. Next up is Green Lantern, and boy oh boy is this an interesting coaster. I hate Riddler's Revenge, well I guess hate is a strong word. I dislike Riddler's Revenge a lot. So going into Green Lantern, I wasn't really looking forward to that much. Then when I got off the coaster, I was pleasantly surprised. This coaster felt like, in a lot of ways, Riddler's Revenge Brother. It is immensely intense, probably the most intense coaster in the park. Now there was a little roughness, almost to the point of head being, but my biggest complaint with this coaster is the standing aspect. It is so uncomfortable and reminded me why I think the surf coaster is going to be an utter failure. I really think this coaster would benefit from Florida's trains, but Medusa is already at this park and the standing gimmick is too unique. This in fact had the longest wait in the park of over 2 hours because it was running one train, but I was thankful I had flash pass. Overall, this is a very intense coaster, but still is extremely uncomfortable for me. Very good in the supporting cast, not really a standout. B tier. Next up is Harley Quinn Crazy Train. I have and always will put kitty coasters in the D tier. Unless there is something rewarding about them, this one is no different. However, the trains are comically long and there is a slight amount of whip in the back row caused from it. Yes, I did pull an alpha male move and rode a kitty coaster in the back row, but still, it's D tier material. What do you expect? Jersey Devil Coaster is up next, and I really did not have a lot of expectations going into this. I liked Wonder Woman Flight of Courage, it was good, I have heard that Jersey Devil Coaster is significantly worse. And it was. I rode it for the first thing in the morning on a chilly day. This thing chugged so hard through the layout, it legit felt like a family coaster. 
Also, it is a tad bit more rough than Wonder Woman, or like the prototype models in my opinion, but it also is not exactly the worst thing to come to the park. I gave Wonder Woman at Magic Mountain an A tier, but this coaster hat is significantly worse. Maybe it was because I rode Wonder Woman in the afternoon on a 100 degree day, and Jersey Devil the first thing in the morning on a 60 degree day, but hey, there could be a difference as well. But anyways, B tier. Another coaster that starts with J is Joker. This is an SNS 4D freespin, and surprisingly, my first one. I did not have a lot of expectations going to this coaster, especially because I dislike X2. And also, everyone who is everyone says SNS 4D freespins are mid, and my thoughts coming out of it, it's mid. It's not bad, it's not good, it's not really fun, it's not comfortable, it's not painful. All what I see it is as is a plus one. I don't think I will see myself marathoning this or riding it multiple times in one day. There are so many better alternatives to this coaster. I did hear some advice that it helps if you tighten the restraint as tight as you can, and I did, though I don't know how much this actually helped. My ride experience was fine. I honestly felt like a flat ride in a way, especially the one that locks you in the cages and spins round and round. It feels a lot like that. For those of you that are curious, I got three flips on my ride, which is kind of middle of the road. Overall, it's a pretty below average experience and a little bit uncomfortable, and it's just there for a plus one. C tier for me. Next up is the tallest coaster in the world, King the Caw. Now honestly, I wasn't that hyped for this coaster despite it being the tallest coaster in the world. I thought it was just going to be a gimmick, and it kind of was. I have ridden Superman Escape from Krypton, which is the closest thing to this that I have ridden, and I thought it was not that good. However, the anticipation was still there when riding King the Caw. On Superman, the bulky restraints removed any type of fear from the ride for me, though over the shoulder restraints on King the Caw really did help make the ride feel a bit more scary. That and being in the front row and seeing the launch track, it is the first time a coaster has made me genuinely scared in a long time. Now Superman is almost as tall as King the Caw, yet Superman feels so much taller because it is in the middle of a park. King the Caw feels so far away and not really looming over guests, so it doesn't give off that appearance. Anyways, the ride experience itself was okay, the launch was super powerful, and you are really shot up the tower and have a good feeling for the speed. It's not amazing, it's a gimmick, but a really good one at that. A tier. Little Devil Coaster is the smallest coaster in the park. It was closed the entire day. I don't even know if I could have ridden it if I wanted to. D tier. You want to know what other coaster was closed today? Medusa. I wasn't really bummed about this too much because I've ridden a mere clone of this coaster in Scream at Magic Mountain. Scream itself is a really good floorless coaster that pulls good G's and does not deserve the hate that it gets, uh, <coughs> Chris. If Scream is anything like it, then it deserves a B tier. It's just a supporting cast coaster. Now here is where I'm going to talk about my Six Flags Premium experience. There are 14 coasters at Great Adventure. I rode 8 of them. Everything else was closed, and you know what was closed? Nitro. I was really looking forward to riding a B&M Hyper for the first time. I have Goliath at Magic Mountain, which makes me think, how freaking good would a coaster be if it was this tall and pulled good forces, especially because I love floater airtime. Nitro was going to be my coaster at Great Adventure, and probably had a good shot at the Elite tier. However, I'm going to put this off for now. Any B&M Hyper is a good B&M Hyper, right? I'll put this in the A tier. Also, to rub it in my face a little more, Nitro opened in the season three days after I went to the park. I hate you, Six Flags. You want to know another coaster that was closed? Runaway Mine Train. Like, God, come on, man. Anyways, this is an Aero Mine Train. I don't think it does much. I've been on one other Aero Mine Train before, Gold Rusher. I can't say I was blown away by it. It's a good family coaster that has stood the test of time. However, it is better than a kiddie coaster because it actually has a layout. C tier. Next up is Skull Mountain, a coaster I actually did get to ride. This is literally an uninspired version of Space Mountain. That's literally it. If there were stars, music, and a longer layout, I definitely could not tell the difference. I love the attempt at theming in the queue line in the station, but as soon as you enter the main ride building, god, it's just an empty box with a coaster in it. There were some decently forceful turnarounds for a family coaster, but the best way I can put it is an uninspired version of Space Mountain. That sums it up very well. C tier. Last but not least is Superman Ultimate Flight. This is a PM flying coaster, and from my rides on Tatsu, I have proclaimed to love PM flying coasters. I went into this coaster with a lot of expectations, and it met them pretty well. This is obviously way worse than Tatsu, but every element is still really good. The pretzel loop is very intense, the inline twist feels like the ones on Tatsu, and overall it just shows the feeling of flying. I do find it strange how far away the station is from the park and how it just sits on a plot of grass. The coaster is a solid BM flyer, but nowhere near as good as Tatsu, thus landing it in the A tier. 
So that's the tier list. It actually makes it look like the park has a well-balanced lineup. Too bad I missed like half of it. That's all for today's video guys, let me know if you agree with my decisions in the comment section below, and as always, make sure to like and subscribe, I'll see you in the next one, have a great rest of your day, good bye.